Hey, good morning, people. Welcome to Monday morning and a new week. I hope that you've had a fantastic weekend. We're in Mark chapter 13 today, and we see Jesus confronting two groups of people. One of them is the Pharisees. We know all about them. They were the religious leaders of the Jewish religion of the day, and they lived their lives according to the law and thou shalt not. And that was the things that dominated their thinking. But now they're joined by a group called the Herodians. Now the Herodians were regarded as sellouts to the Jewish people. As the name infers Herodian, these were Jewish people who were like almost tax collectors for the, the Romans. But along the way, they would snap a whole lot of money for themselves as well. And the Jews did not have any time for the Herodians. They regarded them as sellouts. So here we see the Pharisees and the Herodians coming to try and trick Jesus. And they used a trick that is as old as time itself, the trick of flattery, telling people that they're better than they think they are, that they actually are. Except in the case of Jesus here, they're telling him exactly who he is. I can remember as a kid using flattery to try and get my way at, at home, and I would see my, be my mom come in wearing a new dress, and I would say, hey, mom, that just looks awesome on you, man. It makes you look 20 years younger and 10 pounds lighter. And she would give me the 45-degree angle look, and she would say, here, this flattery is going to get you nowhere. Never worked for me, and it didn't work for these guys either. But here's the story. Listen to what they said in their flattering terms. These guys were not declaring a half-truth. They were telling the total, total truth, but for all the wrong reasons. Listen to this conversation as I read it to you. Later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. But you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me, he asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And I'll talk to you about the rest of what the things tomorrow. But I want you to just pick up on, on what these Pharisees and these Herodians said to Jesus. They were trying to trick him. But the interesting thing was that everything they said about him was absolutely true. And it's worth talking about. Even though the source from which it came was somewhat illegitimate, the truth is the truth, and here's the truth added from their mouths. First of all, they treat Jesus with absolute respect, and they say, teacher. Now, a teacher in the Jewish community was right up there with all the big dogs. He was the one who was a, an authority in the, in the community. When he came close, everybody would, would bow to him, and, and they would kiss his hand or they would you know they they just they just put a teacher at a very high pedestal and so they were honoring Jesus for who he was and who he still is he was and is the great teacher and they treated him in their words with great respect then they said you're a man of integrity you know what integrity is hey integrity is just a good reputation over a long period of time where this deep sense of honesty and what you are in the dark is what you are in the light. And what you are, the things you say you are, the things that you really are. Here's a tough thing. Very often we see hypocrisy around us. We see people declaring themselves to be one thing and yet behaving so badly. And we think, man, that, that just doesn't seem to match up. What you say and what you do just doesn't seem to, to cut it. They don't get together. They don't seem to gel. And there are elements of people today in all of our lives. I guess there's an element of hypocrisy. I guess the depth of the hypocrisy may all be all that changes. You're not swayed by men. That's interesting. Jesus is not swayed by the rich and the famous. He's not swayed by public opinion. He's not like Pontius Pilate who tried Jesus and put him to death for the sake of public opinion. Jesus will not sell out who he is to no matter who the other people were or th thought they were. Um, don't we do that sometimes? We sell out to the things of the world. 
we sell out to try and impress men and we look at this thing here of who they are they say jesus you don't you, you don't care who people are you're the same with them as you are with us you're the same with the rich as you are with the poor you're the same with the wealthy as you are with the those who have absolutely nothing you're the same with the sick as you are with those who are, are healthy jesus you are consistently the same man wouldn't it be great if that was a reputation that we could carry we are the same with everybody and then he he i look at our our situation and i think how honest are we don't we sometimes look around us and say well i need to impress these people therefore let me buy a car that might impress them let me buy a bigger house that might impress them let me spend more money in a lifestyle that i cannot afford but i'll just keep learning it because my my need for for public praise is just so high and you may laugh and say do we really live like that have a look around you i remember driving through the beautiful suburbs of chicago was and there's such affluence in that place it'll blow your your mind and i remember driving down the road with my host and, and looking at these huge houses each one of them could have been a hotel there must be 10 bedrooms in some of these things the gardens were magnificent and there were garages which were probably full of different kinds of cars and i said to my host i said man look at that house you know if we sold that house we could build 10 care centers you know because these people and he said you know i know the people who own that house there's only two people who live in that house the size of a hotel i wonder how many cars they had stashed up in the in the garage there i wonder who they were trying to impress by doing that don't we waste a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to impress the people that don't count at all but we should be playing out to just impress god but these are the things that these people acknowledge that jesus was not and then they 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 culminate by culminate by saying you teach the ways of god in accordance with the truth now you know truth for many people it's a relative tr term isn't it for some people truth is one thing and for other people truth is another thing and so we live in a world that is is battling with trying to find what real truth is all about but the truth he's talking about here is the ultimate truth the ultimate truth that comes from god himself and even if the whole world doesn't believe that truth the fact that god has said it that's enough if god is to stand against the whole world on the issue of truth his truth is absolute and it will never ever change now he compares that with the prevailing truth of the day we look to supposedly wise men to help us with the issue of truth and each one of them has a prevailing truth and many of them have prevailing truths that relate to to what somebody else says so maybe something they studied or a book that they read oh man if only they would read the bible if only they would find that god is the source of truth not prevailing truth determined by the majority but of ultimate truth determined by one person god himself so what these pharisees and what these these herodians were saying was actually the truth i couldn't bypass it without saying hey man that's good stuff that they say but tomorrow you'll hear about their motive for saying it have a great day people see you soon bye